you're trying to defend him, he clearly okay, was. So, he, so this is the issue that we run into, and this is why I try to get away from these topics, right? Your mind, you are unable to see what's actually happening here. No. Yeah, wait, hold on. When you say things like, why are you defending him? I'm not defending him. I'm agnostic you on position. You absolutely are. But your obsession with me using this word, really only for normative reasons, is revealed when you say, why are you defending him when you won't use my label? If you want to ask me, does he engage in anti-Semitic humor? Even about I would say, I would say, I would say, I would say, absolutely, yes, he engages in anti-Semitic humor. If you want to say, is there a chance that he believes in anti-Semitic conspiracies? Yeah, of course there's a chance, and he has in the past. In fact, it might even be likely that he still does today. I just haven't had the conversation with him about it, and I don't really feel like slinging that around when I just don't 100% know. Hi, what's up? Hey, hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, sweet. So, um... I saw your, uh, couple debates with Mr. Girl on Nick Fuentes, and I thought you got, uh, for sure two descriptive issues about Nick wrong. Okay. Um, the first issue being your definition of Nazi. Um, I think it's a little overly specific. Uh, the second descriptive issue is even if we are to go by your definition of Nazi, Nick Fuentes certainly fits that description, uh, undoubtedly. And then, um, the third issue is more of a normative issue on, you know, how to deal with somebody like Nick being a Nazi, whether or not. I know you got into a whole thing on whether it's appropriate to call him a Nazi, you know, so on and so forth, but um, I thought it would be most important to just cover the descriptive issues first. Sure, whatever you want. So, your definition of Nazi, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is somebody who has conspiracy-related anti-Semitism, is a fascist, and is either genocidal towards certain races, ethnic groups, or minorities, or at the very least, uh, wants to perpetrate violence against them. Yeah, generally speaking, yeah. It's like my personal you know, threshold for if I'd call, if I would like seriously levy a Nazi charge with somebody, I think maybe. Okay. Um, now, let's say if Hitler was, did not have conspiracy related anti Semitism but was a fascist and was genocidal to a particular racial group or ethnicity, would he not be a Nazi? Um, the question is a little bit difficult to answer because when you say Nazi, what do you mean by that? Well, we're going by your definition. Sure. Uh, I'm the just trying so, to... I, so, okay. I made this mistake the last time we argued in that I usually will allow somebody to walk me to any hypothetical. So I'll answer your hypothetical, but I'm going to explain why it's a really misleading hypothetical. The reason why this hypothetical is so challenging to answer is because you're giving me a person, you're giving me Hitler, and you're asking him if he would fit my definition of Nazi. However, at the same time, he belonged to an actual Nazi party. So by the actual Nazi party, there were probably a lot of people well, that were actual Nazis that wouldn't fit my personal definition of a Nazi, which makes it kind of an odd hypothetical to navigate. But I guess for the purposes of, of what you're asking me, it seems like, um, would he, were you asking if Hitler would have fit my definition of Nazi if he didn't have the conspiratorial part of the Jewish thing? Correct. Yeah, I, I guess he probably wouldn't then. He wouldn't. If he, if yeah, probably not. That's when I, for my personal definition, as I exist today in the year two thousand and twenty-two, where there is no actual Nazi party, how I would evaluate those Nazi parties to be is probably going to be different than when there was an actual Nazi party in Nazi Germany. Yeah, where there would have been a lot of people in that Nazi party that probably wouldn't fit my modern day description of what it means to be a Nazi. I would imagine. Okay, uh, that's a little surprising. So, okay, like, do you think? Do supposing... you think that? Well, let me ask this. Hold on. Do you think that every single person that was a part of the Nazi Party in Nazi Germany would fit my modern definition of Nazi? I, I would say a large, large portion of them wouldn't. Um, okay. You could argue a lot of people like Joseph Mengele, like one of the worst monsters in history. Mm -hmm. um, probably, well, certainly by your definition, wasn't a Nazi since he was probably just a. Um, opportunistic psychopath sure. you likely okay, yeah. but i uh, i mean the point i'm trying to make here is a modern kind of viewpoint on what a nazi is 
is a little bit more of a generalized term and someone is either it's kind of like a sliding scale uh, where somebody is more of a Nazi or less of a Nazi rather than it just being um, a binary like yes or no. So yeah, I recognize Hitler, that that's how it's used in a lot of places. This is one of the reasons why well, I don't right. use this word. Yeah. Well, right. But I mean, supposing if Hitler uh, did not have conspiratorial related uh, anti-Semitic, uh, anti-Semitic beliefs, um, I think most people in the general po- general population would still say, yeah, he's a Nazi. He's a fascist and genocidal, um, particularly against Jews. Yeah, probably. Uh, I would imagine do so, you, yeah. Do you not see that as a reasonable definition of Nazi? Well, what is the definition you've given me? Somebody that wants to kill Jewish people? Well, I'm. Well, no, I, I'm going by your definition, just with the exclusion of conspiratorial related anti-Semitism. Well, if my definition includes three legs that are necessary for the Nazi definition, well, right, to stand and on, I, I literally like... just said I'm going by your definition, excluding conspiratorial related anti-Semitism. So, we well, if you want to exclude one of the three legs and then ask me if he would fit my definition, excluding one third of it, he would. Well, fit no, the I'm not thirds. asking if it would fit your definition. That, uh-huh. that that would just be stupid. I'm asking, would that be a reasonable definition of Nazi in your view? Oh, I, I don't know if there is. I don't know what you mean by reasonable definition of Nazi. Okay, well, would would you say your average person would be like, yeah, uh, somebody who is anti-Semitic but doesn't have conspiratorial-related anti-Semitism is a fascist and genocidal? Um, do you think most people would say, yeah, that's a Nazi? Most people probably would, but that's a far different question than what is a reasonable definition for Nazi. So, for instance, okay. most people would agree well, with yeah, that, but one. I would also say that most people couldn't define Nazi. Or, I'm sorry, most people couldn't define fascist. Um, I would say over 80% of Americans, probably over 90%, probably couldn't define what well, a fascist is. I, I mean, 80% of Americans probably can't find Venezuela on a map. Like, for sure. But when you uh, give me I the question, know, I, would most people call this person a Nazi as a way to reinforce that that other definition is adequate, but one of the legs of that definition he needs to stand on is a word that both of us agree that over 80% of Americans couldn't identify, I think it weakens the idea that there's a more concrete no, definition for a Nazi than you'd like to No, I, I wouldn't say so, especially in context with your debate with Mr. Girl, uh, where you were arguing the term Nazi has like no meaning anymore. I think people do understand a meaning of Nazi. Um, they might not have a very specific definition, uh-huh. but they know what a Nazi isn't. Um, I think most people know that George Bush isn't a Nazi, for instance. I don't know if that's true today, uh, if, um, but I, I would amend. So I said, I don't wait, know. I, well, I, I'm talking about your average normie, like maybe not necessarily somebody who's a Vosh fan, but your average normie probably wouldn't would know say Bush is a George Nazi. Bush yeah. isn't a Nazi. That's true. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's okay. So like what I'm like, I, I, I don't want to dwell on this for too, too long, but what I'm saying is your average person who's a normie, who isn't like a Vosh fan, um, even somebody who is more right wing, um, like Steven Crowder even, they would probably be fine with the definition of Nazi, somebody who is anti-Semitic, not necessarily conspiratorial related, is fascist and genocidal. Um, It's not necessarily a very specific term anymore because yeah, there isn't any actual Nazi party, but it roughly relates to somebody with those traits. And if somebody is, say, missing a certain trait, like, say, they're anti-Semitic, fascist, but not necessarily genocidal, they may be on that Nazi spectrum, maybe not to the point where you'd outright publicly call them a Nazi, but they're less of a Nazi than somebody like Nick Fuentes. All of these things might be true, sure. Okay. Um... Secondly, uh, following your very strict definition of Nazi, so conspiratorial related anti-Semitism, fascist genocidal, um, when I saw your debate with Mr. Girl, you got um, the first part really fucking wrong. Uh, Nick Fuentes is a conspiratorial anti-Semite. And what was really strange is, like, you know he's a Holocaust denier, right? Um, I don't know if he'd be a Holocaust denier. I think it, the more specific term would be Holocaust revisionist, but sure. Most likely he is. I would imagine he is, yeah. Right. Well, okay. Um, being extremely generous, uh-huh. um, you've seen his cookie analogy thing, right? A million times, yeah. Yeah. So he was saying, at most, there could have only been, like, two to 300,000 deaths. 
Yeah, or if, yeah, um, a few hundred thousand is usually the standard revisionist talking point. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think by nature uh, of that viewpoint, would you not say that's conspiratorial r related? Um, I don't know if the conspiracy to do Holocaust revisionism is of the same level as like conspiracy of Jewish people control society. But I mean, I, they're probably pretty close, I would imagine. Sure. Well, I, I mean, it. it uh, every Holocaust revisionist I've ever encountered um, thinks the Holocaust numbers were fabricated so that Jews could have some sort of political power. So mm -hmm. Nick Fuentes certainly has that belief. Um, yeah, he might. I haven't talked to him about this in a long time, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did. Right. So wouldn't like by that alone, wouldn't that make him a conspiratorial anti-Semite? Um, I guess it depends on the way that he engages with that idea today. I'm not sure. I don't hear him give like serious speeches about the needs to okay. like take out Jewish people or like a Jewish hegemony that's like running the world right now. I know he did like five years okay, ago. I don't know well, if he does today, but. Okay, well, you've never heard him um, basically uh, disavow those beliefs? No, but I, that's, I don't say that qualifier for anything. Well, I think that I think that means a lot. We all know Nick is a lying manipulator, and he's been banned off of practically every platform except one at this point. Um, all, all, even all when all he got those. banned off of, well, even when he he's like still got that one like what is he on um, something TV now? Cozy TV. Uh huh. Um, he he doesn't even me like he uses the fucking cookie analogy. Sure. Um, he so knows I don't know. So, yeah, so I don't know. None of these things like logically follow. So whether or not somebody's disavowed a view or not doesn't affect whether or not I think they still believe it or not. Um, that's well, I, just, I, I think when you're talking about extreme racists, uh, it certainly does. Um, nope, not at all for me. I, I, I don't look for disavowals. There's a lot of reasons why somebody might not disavow. And it's just even if somebody does disavow, there's more information that you need there to figure out if they truly hold a belief or not. So disavowing is something I never care okay. about. Um, calling him a lying manipulator. I mean, I think everybody that does online politics are lying manipulators. Um, whether or not Nick engages in that to a more Linda egregious the manner than most. Destiny. Um, oh, yeah. I guess I, I, like he might, but I would still need to see proof of him believing a certain thing. I can't just say, oh, he's a liar and then invent whatever <laughs> fictitious belief I want. I just need to see proof of him like believing a certain thing um, and then in terms of him being banned off of platforms just because he's banned off platforms doesn't necessarily mean he's a Nazi like none of these things go to supporting the arguments that he has like uh, conspiratorial anti-semitism or whatever okay well if he made uh, the cookie analogy was fairly recent too wasn't it like sure it I don't know if he I don't know if it's ago. a thing that he okay. engages in seriously or if it's like his stupid anti-semitic oh, okay or whatever. well like, listen uh -huh. he he talks in riddles he uses coded language, the cookie analogy. This was only like a couple of years ago. You honestly think he's not taking it seriously? I don't really care that much. That's the thing. Like, there are two okay, types well, of discussions that I can. Well, okay, no, no, it well, doesn't, doesn't matter well, if you well, care. Hold on, it does matter because that's kind of what this all comes down to. There are, there are two different ways that I can approach discussions with online figures or even radical online figures. Is I can either take them at their word and I can engage and debate the beliefs they have. Or I could play this really weird game where I'm like, here's a quote from you for two years ago, and I think you're dog whistling and obfuscating with manipulative lying humor. Those conversations, I don't care about those anymore. I've grown out of those conversations. Those are boring to me at this point. If you want to spend all day okay. trying to find like dog whistles or secret coded language or whatever, you can do that. And I encourage people to do that. If they want to do that. There's whole channels for people trying to figure out okay signs and dog whistles and all that shit. But I, that's boring to me now. I would rather just engage you're, the views that the people profess. Okay, okay dude, uh -huh. you're okay. I think you're diminishing what he's saying. Uh, we know for sure he did the cookie analogy thing two years ago he was telling everybody the whole story about the holocaust is a lie he was using coded language so that he doesn't get banned off a platform you honestly think he was saying that as a joke he was clearly being serious um so I, I don't care if you care or not but i just want you to admit he was yeah, Obviously so this is like serious. this is what I'm saying when I and I understand that you're invested in this argument, so maybe this is impossible. But like, if I back up and I look at it from a macro viewpoint, and somebody asks me, "Can you explain like the political views of a per of a person?" I want to be able to give a well reasoned, thoughtful answer for why I believe a person believes in any given thing. And if somebody asks me about Nick and how he feels about like the Holocaust. 
if the words cookie analogy come out of my mouth to try to justify something I believe, I feel ridiculous. That's just not a level of engagement that I'm looking for today. I, I don't know how you could claim that's ridiculous. Like you, you're well aware with how racists operate. No, I don't. I don't ones I, with extreme views. Sure. So no, especially ones with extreme views. Obviously, they're not going to be upfront. Like, oh yeah, the Holocaust never happened. It was like complete fucking scam. Jews, you know, said that to take over the world. Like those people are banned off of every platform, just like Nick Fuentes, which is why he's using things like the cookie analogy to describe what he's talking about. So if you want to figure out people's political viewpoints because of edgy humor or analogies they use, you're welcome to I do that. I don't know that. how you could call that edgy humor. Because it's you're because talking he's, about he's a guy. literally do you want to watch him say he's like laughing like the whole fucking time he's saying the fucking analogy, right? Now he you laughs can say, all the time. Sure, he, I know that's so, just how he how he yeah, is. So, he's always smiling and laughing so here, about everything. Yeah, so so he, I don't know how you could claim that's some sort of a, a unique uh, behavior in that one instance when he always acts like that. That's just how he naturally is. Sure. So here's here's the different ways that I can engage with this. Okay. Or, or let me let me explain the other end of this. This is what I've seen happen over the last few years. Okay. Around 2017 and 2018, the online um, anti anti SJWs, the people that were fighting against like the crazy alt right crowd that was coming up, became hyper obsessed with trying to find dog whistles and coded language. And it got to the point to where we were posting screenshots of people online trying to cancel people because they made an okay symbol. That's how like, and people got obsessed. Okay, we're not trying, talking I need, about hold on, okay wait, symbols. If you're gonna, you're, you're have, diminishing what he's saying. I have to be able to finish my, if you're gonna lay out a whole narrative, okay, sure, then I need to be able sure. to lay out a whole narrative, okay. right? Yes, my okay. counter narrative, yes. So the obsession with trying to find dog whistles and coded language, in my opinion, has led us to a very bad path. One, it's given people an inability to accurately describe other people's views. From that naturally extends to it's given people an inability to actually counter other people's views. And then three, another problem is it's made it so that people, when they go, when they go to like, um, when they go to have conversations with people, they, they are living in different worlds. I have a strategy for people that engage with like dog whistling and this type of humor, and that's that I'll just ask them to own a position and then we move the conversation forward. Because the way that conversations work when you live in the world of coded language is all you do is you scream at each other all day about whether somebody's a Nazi or whether somebody's dog whistling. I don't care about that. If Nick tries to use a joke like that around me, I might just ask, do you believe the Holocaust was real or the numbers are accurate? In which case he'll either say, er, well, you know, maybe, maybe not. And then I'll push him on it. And then he'll give me a solid answer. He'll either say, no, they're not. And we'll talk about that. Or he'll say, yeah, they are. He'll look like a cuck in front of his audience. And then we'll move on to the next thing. I don't want to have conversations anymore online where I'm making a four hour breakdown on how every humor like, or every joke somebody said means that they're a Nazi. That's just a type of political engagement that I'm not concerned with anymore. That's how I'm approaching politics today. Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, that has nothing to do with what I said. Um, I pointed out how you're diminishing what Nick Fuentes was saying. Somebody brought up the cookie analogy, uh, a racist anti-Semite from his audience, and Nick, understanding that kind of coded language, talked about how he agreed with, you know, the Holocaust being a complete fabrication. Um, like, again, this isn't like, oh, well, uh, okay sign. Uh, yeah, like, no, it's not like that. You're diminishing the whole cookie analogy thing. You're making it seem as though, oh, Nick was just joking. I'm not going to take a joke that seriously. Clearly wasn't joking. Just admit it. Yeah, he was I, I, don't, I don't know. serious when he was talking about the, the cookie analogy. I haven't had a conversation with him relating to his position on the Holocaust, so I don't know. And a, and a clip two years ago you, of him making the cookie analogy is not enough for me to say that he like genuinely believes these things. I just That's not a topic okay. that I've breached yet with him. It might be the case that you, I talked to him about it, and he genuinely is like, you know what? Actually, yeah, I think that the Holocaust is like, if it's not fabricated, it's super exaggerated because Jewish people are kind of like control the levers of like institutions or whatever. And in case I'd say like, okay, yeah, that's kind of an anti-Semitic conspiratorial belief. It's totally possible he believes that. But I, I just, I need more than a clip. That's just I, the engagement level that I'm at right now with him is not here's like a two minute clip of him making a joke. That's just not something I- Okay, I do you remember the full context of why he brought up the cookie analogy? I don't know, I don't really care though. Okay, well, someone from his audience uh, in his chat brought up the Holocaust, but they were using the cookie analogy, then Nick agreed with what he was saying and using the cookie analogy explained how the Holocaust could never have happened. So how could you like even like entertain the idea that it was a joke when he was clearly being serious? 
He, he might have been being serious. If you think he's serious on it, that's what fine. What do you mean you he might it. have been? He clearly was. I, I don't know why you're trying to defend him. He clearly okay, was. So, he, so this is the issue that we run into, and this is why I try to get away from these topics, right? Your mind, you are unable to see what's actually happening here. No. Yeah, wait, hold on. When you say things like, why are you defending him? I'm not defending him. I'm agnostic you on the position. You absolutely are. But your obsession with me using this word, really only for normative reasons, is revealed when you say, why are you defending him when you won't use my label? If you want to ask me, does he engage in anti-Semitic humor? Even about I would the say, label. I would say, I would say, I would say absolutely yes, he engages in anti-Semitic humor. If you want to say, is there a chance that he believes in anti-Semitic conspiracies? Yeah, of course there's a chance, and he has in the past. In fact, it might even be likely that he still does today. I just haven't had the conversation with him about it, and I don't really feel like slinging that around when I just don't 100% know. I would rather focus on the things that he says that are bad that I do know, than try to like guess or divine, like, if he still truly believes in something or not, based on, on humorous clips from two years ago. That's just not something I'm interested in doing. It, it wasn't a humorous clip. Okay, dude, um, you're lying when you say this. It was not a humorous clip. He was clearly serious. And on top of that, um, besides the cooking analogy thing, um, I'm looking at the ADL's website. They actually saved a bunch of tweets uh, that he made. Um, he claimed the Daily Wire uh, columnist Matt Walsh is a Shabos Goy race trader because he works for Jews like Ben Shapiro. Um, they go over the cookie, you know, the cookie uh, analogy, Holocaust denial thing. Um, he says, I don't see Jews as Europeans and I don't see them part of, of Western society, particularly because they're not uh, Christian. Um, he also urged. Wait, hold on. What is even? Wait, wait, wait. What's even the problem with that last quote? Or t walk me through that one. Sorry, the race trader? No, no, no. The one about how he says that he doesn't see Jews as the same as like Western society or whatever because they're not Christian. What's wrong with that? Or, or, or how does that, how is that like necessarily anti-Semitic? How is that necessarily anti-Semitic? He's pointing out Jews specifically, and this is part of a pattern of behavior, Holocaust denial, calling people race traitors for No, 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 wait, wait, with the Jews. last quote that you read, you're just giving me, what? now you're doing the thing yeah, that you're giving me like, about, again, the... again, let's take this into context. He denies the Holocaust, he calls people race traitors for working with Jews, and then he says he doesn't see Jews as part as, uh, of Western society. Like, he's clearly singling out Jews here. I don't know how you could consider that anti-Semitic. If he just wanted to say, I don't see non-Christians as part of Western society, that's a different thing than saying, I don't see Jews as part of Western well, society. Well, Mike, he probably, doesn't see, he probably doesn't see non-Christians as part of Western He probably says something about Muslims okay, too, then why right? Did he, okay, then why do you think he singled out Jews specifically? Well, what, was the context of that, what, was the context of, what was the context of that quote? What do you mean? It, it's it was just a Twitter post he made. I don't see Jews as Europeans. I don't see them part of Western civilization, particularly because they're not Christian. Like again, taken into context with everything else, uh -huh. being a Holocaust denier, calling people race traitors for working with Jews like Ben Shapiro, and then saying I don't see Jews as part of Western society because they're not Christian. He didn't say I don't see anybody who is not Christian as part of Western civilization. He said Jews specifically. So you wouldn't consider that anti-Semitic, especially in context with everything else he said? I don't think there's much of a question if Nick is anti-Semitic. He probably is. I don't think he likes Jewish no, people I, very I'm, much. I'm saying, but in no, terms no, of level I'm of saying you don't see that quote specifically as anti-Semitic especially in context with everything else he said. Pro yeah, probably. But I, we're building towards what like... What do you mean probably? Um... I, I don't know how to communicate with this to you because I, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, You're not sure? Okay. What, what well, no, no, think? no. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, 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 I'm making my best faith ever to do this, okay? I, I, don't, I truly don't know what to say to you. When people ask me questions about the political belief of somebody, if somebody says, what do you think about Donald Trump? Is he racist? My engagement with that question is not, here's three tweets that he said, or here's like two quotes. It's usually going to be describing holistically a situation that he was involved in that I think is a key like aspect of his mental state to try to describe like whatever I'm trying to to build towards an argument. I know that you want to label Fuentes as a thing and you've got a whole ADL website of like a list of quotes and jokes or whatever. It might be that he still believes in the stuff. If that's true, why not just go have a debate here, with him about it? Like why not just go- Here, here we- Okay, well, Nick uh, dodges debates like fucking crazy. Okay, do you want me to ask um, him if you'll have a debate? A do you want me to ask okay, him sure, right now? Okay, sure, sure. Okay, sure. I'll, yeah. I'll put the feelings um, out if you want to, okay? Sure. Sure, sure. 
Okay, well, Destiny, you keep doing this where, oh, the cookie analogy was a joke. Oh, I don't know how that tweet was anti-Semitic. Like, again, do you not see how ridiculous this is? I just, no, no, I'm just asking for the context of the tweet. Because when you when he says something like, I don't believe that Jews are part of Western society um, because they're not Christian and because they're not white, I could imagine him saying that you could consider that anti-Semitic, sure, but he probably feels that way about a whole bunch of people that aren't Jewish as well. He probably feels the same way about Muslims, probably feels the same way about a lot of brown people. You could also say, I guess he's okay, anti-Semitic well, he and anti-Islamic. Okay, and... well, he specifically outed Jews. Sure, that, I was history. just asking what the context of the quote was. That's all I was asking. Was he re responding to somebody talking about Jewish people or Israel? That's all I was asking. That's right. Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure, but again, well, isn't that kind when of he important? Specifically outs Jews, but no. no, no, I don't know if he's specifically um, outing them context. because it might be in response to something else. That's the whole point. This is why I don't like quote sniping, because the issue. Okay, and he, wait, well, wait, wait, hold on, real quick. This is another issue. This, this is. Sniping. I know you're saying that, but here's the issue: is that when I have a debate with somebody like Fuentes or Lauren Southern or any far right person, and this has happened to me too many times for me to count. It's one of the reasons why I don't do this anymore. Is because when I go to somebody with a list of quotes and I say, "Oh, what about this or that or that?" Oftentimes, what they say is, "Oh, well, did you see the full context? This was in reference to this thing," and it actually radically changes the context of that particular quote. And then I look like an idiot. And now I've actually given a lot of cover to that person who might genuinely be anti-Semitic because all I came with was a list of quotes. If you ask me today about a particular belief that Nick has, I think I can describe it pretty well, and I think it'll be pretty accurate, and I can attack it on that accuracy, but it's not because of a list of quotes I've read. It's because of pretty in-depth conversations I've had with him publicly. Uh, okay, again, this is a repeated history where he denies the Holocaust, calls people race traitors for working with Jews, um, makes claims about Jews not being part of Western civilization because they're not Christian. On top of that, He's made several other tweets about uh, Jewish control, how we have to talk about the issue of Jews having too much power. What does this all say to you? I, like, I, I know that it's like, so, I know that me, it's like super lame, but like, I need the context on, on, on what's being said. Like, Jews do okay. have a disproportionate amount of power. Um, I mean, there's a lot of advocacy that goes on for Israel. Like, you can paint a lot of people as being like super anti-Semitic, depending on the list of quotes you give. But I will say okay. that, given his history, it wouldn't surprise me if he was okay. Yeah, you're like you're this, you're this morally yeah you're obsessed emotionally with the topic. No, no, but no. If you want to be obsessed emotionally with the topic, that's fine. I'm not even judging no, you for it. This is Just cope. leave me alone. <laughs> like, let me do my project, my political project, and then you can be on the channel where you're like, this guy's a fucking Nazi. You can do that. You can make videos about it, you can talk about it all day. I just don't want to be involved okay, in that kind of shit okay. anymore. I don't care. So, okay, so Destiny, um, when Nick Fuentes denies the Holocaust, says people who work with Jews are race traitors, claims that Jews have too much power and we have to talk about Jewish power, he doesn't see them as uh, part of Western civilization. Do you think that's enough to call him a conspiracy, uh, conspiratorial related anti-Semite? Um, maybe it sounds like it's rising to that level. Yeah, maybe. it's possible. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I would have I, to I'm see. I'm hearing the a lot of maybe's when there's like concrete evidence. I have people posting mainstream articles about me that are misquoting my positions on trans people right now, and these articles are showing up on like Vice and Kotaku, and people are fighting over my Wikipedia article over this shit. I'm not about to come here with four quotes from somebody and say this guy is 100% into this particular thing. I, if you want, I could the next conversation I have with him, I could try to uh, hammer out his fucking views on Jewish people. If you want, if that's something that's like really important to you, I can do that. It's just not something that's very relevant, I think, today to like all of all the totality of things we can talk about. But I can put that on the agenda. I'll put that on the docket for our next conversation, if that's a really important one to you. Okay, uh, Destiny, again, if someone denies the Holocaust, claims that people are race traitors for working with Jews, claims they're not part of Western civilization, and says they have too much power in society, and the Jews are trying to take control over everything, and they're part of this globalist agenda, does that fit conspiratorial related anti-Semitism? If all of those things are true and current, yeah, I'd say it probably does. Okay, then Nick would certainly fit your specific dish, uh, definition of Nazi. Okay. Well, no, that was one of the three legs, but... Okay, well, you admitted he is a fascist on stream, and you also said he's probably genocidal. I never said he's probably um, genocidal. The question was, given his perfect idealistic world, would he commit genocide? Maybe, but I, he doesn't advocate for genocide right now, and I've never heard a clip of him saying as much, at least for- Okay, well, Hitler never av advocated for genocide publicly, so I, I don't know why that would mean terribly much to you, especially Okay, so I should just take that leg out, since people, I should just assume that anybody could be well, genocide? Well, no, all of these, well, no, all of these people who have 
have committed genocides before, um, like Hitler. Um, they don't, this is like, it goes in stages. Um, they will say things like Jews aren't part of, of our society. Um, Jews have too much power and control. They're trying to take over the world. Like these, they're trying to muddy our bloodline. Uh, we need to make sure that all these other races don't intermingle with us. This, these sorts of ideas are what lead to genocide. Those are the genocidal ideas. And once you dehumanize them and make, keep making them the outgroup more and more and more, that's what leads to the Holocaust, which is exactly what Nick Fuentes is doing. So even though he's not like outwardly admitting that I want to commit a genocide, by the way, um, actually, he has said something to the effect of wanting to wipe out gay people. Um, I don't know how you could say Nick Fuentes isn't genocidal. Uh, so I would say firstly, being being charitable to your position, he probably is. So for, I don't think he's currently advocated for any of that. If he has, then feel free to show it to me. Secondly, Hitler did talk about genocide before he was fucking the leader of Germany and ready to commit genocide. Um, thirdly, if you want to get him on the genocide thing, I don't know why, have you ever like asked him to have like a debate on these topics? Uh, Dr. Avi has, he just keeps dodging Dr. Avi. Okay, well, I'll poke him and I'll see if he wants to talk to okay. you guys and you can debate him about this. For sure. Okay, um, so you still would not uh, consider Fuentes a Nazi given he pretty much perfectly aligns with your definition of Nazi. I haven't vetted the information personally to see if he does align with my definition, but secondly, even if he did align with my personal definition, I probably still wouldn't because it's not worth the public fight over the term. There's just nothing to be gained and there's everything to be lost by using it. And I think that it serves to obfuscate is... or defense his position. Okay, well, so. you flat out admitted he was a fascist. Um, yeah, but they don't deny being I, a I fascist. Don't they don't care about that. They, they, well, they'll openly say, well, they might not say fascist, but they're like, yeah, fasci, basically. They're anti-democratic, you... they're... They don't care about like single party rule. Like they don't care much about like democracy or free speech. They're not liberals, right? So like calling them a fascist is not controversial. I don't get into weird fights doing that. They're like, oh yeah, we're kind of okay. Fascist. Well, you admit he's an anti semite, not necessarily conspiratorial related anti semite, even though that's obvious. Uh, you admit he's a fascist, and in your debate with Mr. Girl, you said he is probably genocidal or would at least commit violence against ethnic groups if he came to power i don't believe you that think he, I, no, no, no. Somebody, he, he asked me in like an ideal world where he was like god emperor with perfect power no that's that wasn't the context okay then i misspoke or i take back what i said i i don't i okay. believe that he asked me like in an ideal world would nick be genocidal i'm pretty sure that's what he said that that's what i remember him saying but right now on none of his platforms does he advocate for genocide or anything like that and there are farther right groups that do online and he doesn't uh, is it possible that once he's in power that he could be genocidal probably more than like an average politician that's true for sure but like it's not something that he says so it's not something that i contend with again i'm and, not interested in boxing with shadows okay and you're telling me somebody who is a conspiratorial anti-semite who is a fascist We've locked down, he's certainly those two things. Um, and maybe genocidal, you think there's something to lose in calling him a Nazi? Yes. What? I, I would rather just confront the actual views. When you call somebody- uh, Okay, oh, what yeah. is lost in calling him a Nazi? Because then we get into weird fights over what exactly what we're having right now, which is, is he a Nazi? And if you go into a debate calling him a Nazi, you're gonna spend the next hour or two fighting over the intricacies of what a Nazi is. And chances are, the people in his community are way more sophisticated when it comes to an understanding of what a Nazi is, and they know that they don't meet the threshold for what an actual Nazi is. So you just look like an okay. idiot. Okay, okay. You think Nick Fuentes' audience are sophisticated? They're in, Holocaust deniers. They're fucking idiots. What do you think sophisticated means? Are there idiots? Fuck, I don't know. I don't know what you want to say. Uh, I mean, do you think the vegan audience is sophisticated or are all idiots? Or is everybody an idiot or are just the people that agree with you sophisticated? There's idiots in every community. Um, okay. I'd say the vegan community on the whole is smarter than a lot of other communities. Okay. But um, I think that vegans like, probably have a really sophisticated okay. understanding of like vegan okay. ethics. That would be my guess. I, Right. What's 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 bizarre about this is you're worried. No, 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 about no wait, Nick hold on. I want to. Wait, 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 wait. You're just gonna what's bizarre about this is you're worried about Nick Fuentes's audience seeing you calling him a Nazi and not believing you. 
Well, they don't believe the Holocaust ever happened. So when Nick Fuentes makes these descriptive claims, the Holocaust never happened, Jews are committing some sort of worldwide conspiracy, they're trying to get power, well, when you call them out on these things, even though it would fit a definition of Nazi, well, they just plain flat out don't care. So I don't know why you're particularly concerned with some of the things that his audience believes in when they believe in absolutely ridiculous nonsense. I'm sure half of them think fascism is okay. Like, why, why, like, no shit, they're gonna, if you call him a Nazi and his audience hears that, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, here we go. If you call him a fascist or an anti-Semite, they'll say, oh yeah, here we go. No, you're dead wrong because you don't, you don't spend any time in these communities. If I said, Nick, you're kind of anti-Semitic, then his audience would, I haven't lost their ear because they're like, yeah, no shit, we're anti-Semitic. Jews are trying to fucking destroy the world. But if I call him a Nazi, there's a whole can of worms that I'm opening up by doing that. If I call him a fascist, most of them be like, yeah, kind of sure. We're not liberals. We don't give a fuck about like single party rule or like like how the state runs or whatever. Sure, like they're not liberals basically is what fascist means. Um, they probably agree with that too. But the Nazi label, it brings with it a whole bunch of different things that don't accurately describe the America First movement. Also, just back on when I said sophisticated, people can have a sophisticated level of understanding of different things. I don't think the average communist is very smart, but they have probably generally have a pretty sophisticated understanding of like the notion of like a communist or an anarchist or a socialist. Much like in Nick Fuentes' community, they probably have a pretty sophisticated understanding of the notion of like a wig nat, a, a Nazi, a fucking alt-writer. Like they probably have, because they've heard these terms used against them and they've used it amongst themselves so much. That's what I mean when I say they have a sophisticated sophisticated understanding of these things. Okay. Not that they're highly intelligent 150 IQ people. Okay, so you're telling me they would be fine with being um, referred to as anti-Semitic. They're fine with being referred to as fascist. Um, two big things that are requirements to be considered a Nazi, and we're talking about um, how your average normie person would even define a Nazi. Uh, and you think they wouldn't take you seriously because? Because Nazi is a far different thing than being anti-Semitic and fascist. But no, no, um, not to your average person. I'm not talking uh, to the average why person. Why, why do you think I'm talking to the average person? First of all, by having these conversations online, I'm already really far removed from the quote unquote average person. I'm talking to my politically engaged okay, audience well, and I'm talking to his politically engaged audience and then people in the middle who are also relatively politically engaged. Uh, even within his community, you really think somebody who would fit anti-Semitism fascist Fascist regimes are also usually particularly violent um, and commit genocide. How is it ridiculous to label them I Nazi? think that his community will reject outwardly things like um, genocidal intent. I think that they'll push uh, okay. against that pretty hard. Genocidal intent. Like, I think reject. that if you were to grill most America First people, I think they would say, like, we're not genocide. We just want to, like, restrict immigration. We don't like a whole bunch of non-white immigration. We want to, like, make sure that white people don't become a minority. But they wouldn't go as far as, like, we need to start killing people in society that we disagree with. I think in general, that's the what most of the America First people believe. Yeah. Do you think uh, a lot of them are Nazi sympathizers? They're probably sympathetic towards a whole bunch of horrible people. Sure. Okay, then I don't know why, even to that group, it's fine calling them anti-Semites, anti fascists, but not Nazis, especially when a lot of them are Nazi sympathizers. If you want to do it, why not just go for it? Why do you need me to do it so much? Okay, well, the main problem I have is you've been trying to downplay everything you said, everything he does, Oh, well, that that's not actually anti-Semitic. Oh, I don't know if he actually believes the Holocaust happened or not. It was, it was just a cookie analogy joke. It was just a joke. These clearly aren't jokes. And, like, it, it is so obvious uh, when you're saying this, you're lying to yourself. Like, nobody believes this with any sense. Okay. You Did really think the, the cookie oh, analogy was okay. a joke? Like, you really expect me to take that seriously? They engage with a lot of edgy humor. I don't know. It's hard to figure out how much is a joke versus how much have underlying elements of truth to it. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that like none of them believe that the Holocaust, it, there's not like a lot of Holocaust revision, revisionism going on. I'm sure a lot of them believe that. And that joke is probably one way that they kind of like hint at it. You, again, you expect me to take you seriously when you entertain the idea that it was a joke. 
It's obviously a joke. The question is the truth underlying the it, joke. It's obviously not a joke. Oh, so he actually believes that he's trying to bake six million cookies? Uh, or, like... It's uh, obviously like, a fucking joke, and the, jo the point dumb, of the joke... Do you think playing dumb is, is gonna, like, help you here? We know the it's an analogy. It's not a joke. It's a humorous analogy. That's why you use a grandma and an oven and cookies. It's a joke. But you can use jokes well, to get, Well, it's not like, a joke. It's an analogy. Do you think sometimes jokes can be analogies? Well, they can, but it clearly wasn't a joke. They're talking about something fucking serious. They're talking about yeah, that jokes whether or not can be, when people six joke about how human like, beings were murdered. So when somebody says like, despite being twenty percent of the population, pit bulls are eighty percent. That's a joke that also hints at other types of like racial stuff, right? Do you understand that? Destiny. He wasn't joking. He was so using he, a cookie analogy so that he wouldn't have to publicly say that I don't believe the Holocaust ever happened, and at most only two or three hundred thousand people could even possibly be killed. Yeah, that part's not the joke. That's the probably the real underlying belief, but he uses humor to get at it. That's the point of edgy humor. But uh, maybe Again, we just, we just you disagree keep on trying to downplay okay. it. Hold on. It wasn't no, I'm not humor. trying to downplay anything. This is the issue, okay? You keep saying I'm downplaying everything he said or does. does. That's not true. In every conversation, you can't point to me a single time where I'm talking to him or downplaying anything. I'm challenging him on almost everything he's saying. The only thing I'm quote unquote downplaying are jokes or whatever things he said like two or three or four years ago that I just haven't directly confronted you because we haven't had those conversations. I'm not downplaying anything ever whenever I'm having a conversation with him. And what's more, I think I'm more accurately and appropriately challenging him on things he's saying rather than sitting here and trying to figure out like what his views are on shit jokes or whatever things he said like two or three or four or five years ago although i guess if i wanted to i can have that debate on the holocaust with him or if you want to you can return okay. try to bully him into that debate well but. well destiny uh if anybody wants to just google nick fuentes cookie analogy you can see the video for yourself it clearly was not a joke and you keep claiming it's a joke so that you can have plausible deniability that, oh, maybe he doesn't actually believe that when clearly he fucking does. Okay, listen to what you're saying. You're saying, I'm trying to get plausible deniability for saying that maybe he doesn't actually believe it when I've literally told you 20 times that he almost certainly believes in Holocaust revisionism. Why would I be trying to get plausible deniability by calling that a joke when I'm trying to get plausible deniability for the thing that I'm not denying? Do you understand how that doesn't make okay, any sense? Okay, Destiny. Do you understand the it, difference? It, Hold on. The difference okay. is, is that I can cut through all of that bullshit by just answering the question. Saying, yeah, he's probably like somewhat of a Holocaust revisionist. I've heard all these arguments before, some given by him and many people in his community. What do you and mean I know probably? That he the, is. Okay, I, I don't know. We're in different worlds. I don't know what you want me to say. Um, okay, can, can you explain to me why he tries, why he keeps dodging debates on Holocaust, on the Holocaust then? If he's not a revisionist. Uh, he might be dodging them because he's a revisionist. I don't know. I don't know what kind of like, there, it could be the case what, what that do he mean? does. Well, it could be the case that he doesn't want to debate it because he knows it looks really fucking bad when you come out and publicly deny uh, okay, the fucking Holocaust. Okay, yeah, so you could admit, be okay, so, so you admit he's dodging debates on Holocaust revisionism. He's made the fucking cookie analogy. Wait, hold on. I don't, what does I don't, this say to you? I don't, I don't know why he's dodging debates with you. I hate your entire community. Okay. So I dodge debates no, against you no. guys all the time. No, so, so, no, no. Why would he dodge a debate on Holocaust revisionism after he made the cookie analogy? What is that? What is the only I'm logical just, explanation of that, Destiny? There's pl you you can't just throw the word logical and pretend that it becomes deductive. No, no. True. There's only We're one using explanation. No, there's for that. plenty He's a of Holocaust revisionist. Hold on. He's a ho there's only one explanation for that. He is a Holocaust revisionist, and he's dodging these debates because he knows he will lose because he's a Holocaust revisionist with no evidence to support his claims. Okay, so you're a logic bro. I've seen your communities. I know you do a lot of philosophy. Do you believe that what you just said is actually 100% deductively true? We couldn't induct yes. any. Uh, okay, then I don't believe you're engaging in good faith with this conversation now. So, you're not. Okay. Do you want me to give you one other Probably. potential explanation? No, no, okay, no, wait, wait, wait. Probably a Holocaust revisionist. Okay, well, ask him. L let's see what happens. You want to make a $10 million bet? Do you, under do you see that now you're even boxing 
against shadows with me? I've already told oh, you that- Oh, okay, it's a shadow. I've right. already it's told you that I think he probably is a Holocaust revisionist. Probably, probably. Yeah, because not I haven't 100%. had the, I haven't, no, guy, you don't even know yeah, 100%. not 100%. The cookie analogy thing, oh, it's just a joke. Oh, he's dodging debates with people on Holocaust revisionism? I don't know why he'd do that. I dodge debates What's against your community all the time. Okay, okay, Destiny. If you were not a Holocaust revisionist and you thought six million Jews died in the Holocaust, somebody challenged you on a debate on Holocaust revisionism with their position being six million Jews died in the Holocaust, what would be the only response you could give? In your, well, for your, for the I'm people not a Holocaust in your, revisionist. For people in your community, I just wouldn't respond. Even people in your community I like, like Dr. Ow. Avi, I like oh, the Avi fuck. guy a ton. I wouldn't respond. I just don't fuck with that community <sighs> ever. But I don't know if he feels the same way or not. He might, like I said, uh, he might be dodging because you, he doesn't want that view to be publicly ignored added. what I just said. You completely ignored what I just said. Okay, Destiny, if he wasn't a Holocaust revisionist and he believed the factual story that six million Jews died in the Holocaust and somebody came out and asked him, do you want to have a debate on Holocaust revisionism? Um, and their position was, you know, six million Jews died in the Holocaust. The only thing he would have to say and to respond to you is, oh, well, there's no point in debating. I like six million Jews died. I'm not a revisionist. Wait, but if he said that, you would just say he's lying. What's even the point of that? What do you what do you mean? He didn't say that. No, no. But if he did say that, wouldn't you just say that he's lying? So why do you even care? OK, well, I would. The next step would be to ask him if he's changed his opinion. He, then he just wouldn't respond. You ask for a debate. He says, no. He says, oh, I believe that six million Jews died. And then he says, yeah, I did change my opinion. I think no, six million he, Jews died. He dodges. Yes. Yeah, so, OK, let's say that he responds. He says, oh, no, I don't want to I don't want to debate that because I do think six million Jews died. What would you be saying next? OK, well, the next thing I'd say is, did you change your opinion? He'd say, yeah, I did. OK. Well, then fair enough, but that's not what happened. No, no, no. That would be enough to change your mind? <laughs> that would be enough to change my mind on him not being a Holocaust revisionist. Is one tweet say- Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me calm down. What do you mean one tweet? You mean the cookie analogy where he said, oh yeah, I totally agree. The Holocaust never happened. You I don't, I don't, I don't engage with- Yeah, that's just one yeah. tweet. Oh, that was just a mm -hmm. joke. Oh, he probably wasn't even serious there. Who knows? I don't engage right? with that, politics. That whole I don't engage with politics at this level. I don't know what you want me to say. Somebody tweeting out that they've 180 on a position doesn't mean anything to me. I would have to see an extended discussion or what conversation around it. What do you mean tweeted it. out? Somebody, if, 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 he, if I if have he a asked, direct conversation with him and I ask okay. him, do you want to have a debate on Holocaust revisionism? And he says, no, I'm not a revisionist. Six million Jews died. And the next thing I ask him is, oh, did you change your opinion on that? He said, yeah, I used to be a revisionist. Now I'm not. I think six million Jews died. In the yeah, that, that, that wouldn't be what, like, that, I would have to have way more like his opinion. No, no. I would have to have a much deeper conversation to figure out what he means by that. Because if he did truly change his position and he believed it before, that implies a really fundamental shift in underlying views and beliefs about the world. If you believe that there was a whole Jewish conspiracy and that's gone now, how does that affect, that should ripple effect out to all of your other political beliefs. What else were you wrong about before? Like there's a deeper conversation to be had there than just, oh no, I changed my mind. We're talking about Holocaust revisionism specifically. Sure, it could affect his other beliefs. But we're talking about Holocaust revisionism no, specifically. there is no Holocaust revisionism specifically. That's not a belief that somebody can have on their own. That belief is, is a symptom that's indicative it is. of fo No, no, it actually is. Okay, I, 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 don't, people... I, don't do, I don't do politics like this. I, I don't know what you want me to say, dude. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, like, well, I don't, I don't um, think anybody just like randomly reads a thing and they're like, oh, I don't believe in the Holocaust. I think that that is a, that is a downstream belief from other far more deeply no, rooted beliefs. No, 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 not necessarily. Um, I've actually known people personally. Um, you should look at uh, Vegetable Police, um, Casey. Uh, the guy is a complete fucking idiot. He literally has no critical thinking skills. Okay, Somehow I don't think Nick. Hold on, up. I don't think Nick is a okay, complete well, idiot with me. no. Well, if you're gonna I, give well, me the, the excuse idiot. of like, here's a random retard that like believed the thing and does anymore, then sure, I'm sure you can okay, find those well, people. Okay, well, Nick is a complete fucking idiot. We yeah, really we know that. No, we don't know he's that. I don't believe that's the case at all. Idiot. I don't think oh, so. Oh, really? We don't know? Okay, well, he's a Holocaust revisionist, doesn't believe the Holocaust happened, thinks women should be treated like, uh, you know, the Taliban treat women. Yeah, that's not an idiot. What, okay. do, what do either of those things have to do with intelligence? Your views on women or whether well, or not you I don't you know. Believe... I, think there's a pretty, I think there's a pretty big fucking overlap between these sorts of political beliefs and stupidity, but... 
Uh, okay. Well, uh, well uh, there might be an overlap. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen the data on that or I haven't like thought about that much in terms of like far right beliefs versus far left beliefs. But I don't think that not liking women or wanting to be oppressive even towards women or being a Holocaust revisionist or denialist flat out. I don't think either of those are necessarily like correlated with low intelligence. If I had to guess, my guess is going to be as sad as it is probably is correlated with higher intelligence because you probably have to be a certain IQ just even engage with Holocaust revisionism. Not that that makes it right or good, but that would be my guess on that. Much like the people that engage with flat earth at really high levels are also probably more intelligent than average. That'd be my guess. Probably with most hardcore conspiracies, those people probably tend to be higher IQ. That's going to be my guess, or at least the leaders of those movements tend to be. Okay, well, um, let's... Let's try to wrap things up. Um, Do you think that Hitler was an idiot? Absolutely. Um, the guy ha made so many stupid, ridiculous fucking decisions. He was an idiot. How can you even... Okay, so again, you're reinforcing my other point. All of these words are unbelievably normatively loaded for you. Nazi, idiot. Like, you mean, when you're saying no. these, what you really mean is like, good, bad or like or don't like. That's what you no. really mean. How can you call no. Hitler an idiot? How can I call Hitler an idiot? Uh, I don't know, going to war with Russia. That was pretty fucking stupid. So because uh, you've got alone. hindsight 2020, some bad military decision? Hindsight 2020, uh, I don't know, dude. That's <laughs> like even his fucking commanders told him it was a bad idea. Sure, I'm sure a lot of commanders have told a lot of people through history a lot of things are bad ideas. But he controlled almost all of Europe at one point. He like brought a nation that was on the brink of collapse to being like the, the ruler of all of fucking Europe. Like Controlled all of Europe. Okay, you realize at the fucking time a lot of the other militaries in the world had like practically no technology. Like, Germany at the time was a modern mechanized military with um, tons of tanks, lots of vehicles, they had modern military strategies, new advanced firearms. Uh, when they invaded France, they didn't even have, fu have fucking radios to communicate. Like, what do you mean? Oh, he controlled all of Europe at one point. Well, no shit, they might as well have been fighting with fucking rocks and sticks. Wasn't Germany as a country literally bankrupt? 15 to 20 years earlier after World War I? What, what the fuck does that matter? Uh, I guess it doesn't matter at all. Okay, so Hitler was dumb, just lucky, I guess. Is every fascist leader dumb to you? So like Mussolini was dumb. Um, I don't even know what the Emperor of Japan's name, that guy was dumb. Um, like is is every like is every is are there any smart fascist leaders? Not necessarily. Leaders? Okay. Well, um, which one? Yeah. Not necessarily. I think uh, probably Mao Zedong was a relatively intelligent guy. Um, he did some stupid things. I think he was kind of crazy. But I, I, again, I this is besides the point. Um, I I think it is absolutely ridiculous how you keep trying to downplay. All the things Fuentes has said, oh, it's a joke, oh, it's just one tweet, when there's just a series of tweets, an incredibly long list of repeated behavior. Uh, the guy is evasive as fuck, you know that. Not when, um, I'm, when I'm talking to him. No, it is he's not, because I can hold him fuck, in place. Dude. When you say I'm trying to downplay things, I'm not downplaying, I'm just agnostic on things that you want me to take a hard position on, because I haven't had a current conversation with them about them. Uh, okay. Dude, um, it, it has gotten to the point of ridiculousness when the guy has made the cookie analogy and is dodging debates on Holocaust revisionism, and you still even refuse to admit that he is for sure a Holocaust revisionist. I, I've like, already what are you told, trying to do here? I, do you, I, I'll repeat for like, like the, what, what's you're, what's you're not confusing, even gonna let me say it. Okay. Uh, like what's confusing to me here mm -hmm. is why are you doing this? These things are so like. You, you know that, like, you know that I've okay, told you well, like twenty listen, times in this conversation that he's probably a Holocaust no, listen, revisionist, right? I've listen, literally said that. I don't know why you keep pretending listen, I haven't. But go probably, ahead. Probably, probably. Yeah, because I don't know one hundred percent. Not none of us do. Shadows. I thought you were. A, cool, I thought you were a philosophy cool. guy. You can't cool, know one hundred percent. Oh, do you? Oh, do you know one hundred percent? If I'm real, destiny. Maybe I'm fake. Maybe I'm a hologram. I with a pretty high like, degree of certainty. Are we really going to that fucking level? I don't think that the probability that you're a fake AI is at the same level as the probability he might not be a Holocaust revisionist. I don't know. Okay, um, Destiny, like, again, the, I think this, this is the same problem that, uh, Mr. Girl has with you. Mm -hmm. When you say things like, I don't know if he's a, you know, uh, a conspiratorial anti-Semite, 
I don't know if he's a Holocaust denier or a revisionist. Like, probably is, but I don't know. You are muddying the, like, the hit, the, the Nazi thing, um, where certainly in academic context, everybody would agree that Nick Fuentes would fit the definition of a Nazi. In an academic context? You keep. Well, just to be clear, keep, just to be clear, just to be clear, in an academic context, nobody would call him a Nazi. He doesn't fit the term academic. Absolutely, whatsoever. everybody would. He, he's not uh, even that close. Is, that is so ridiculous. How can, that you, is be so a, ridiculous. How can you be a fucking Catholic Dude. and a Nazi at the same time? What are you talking about? Hitler was a fucking Catholic. What are no, you talking about? He was he was cozy with the Catholic Church. No, you, I, I don't know. What How to can say. you be a, a Nazi and a Catholic at the same time? Really? <laughs> the guy who was cozy with the fucking Catholic Church. No. The like, guy who identified as a Catholic. Okay, you're just. I guess you're, Hitler you're, wasn't a Nazi. You you're had he was Catholic. Dead wrong. Guys. You're, Hitler you're, wasn't a Nazi. You're dead wrong. There you go. Des Destiny says Hitler wasn't a Nazi. He was Catholic. I'm this pretty is, sure the Nazi movement was literally anti-Catholic, but... Why are you muddying the fucking waters not, like this? That's what I'd love to know. I'm not muddying the waters on any of the things that I'm speaking You about. are muddying the waters the on The only time the waters is. get muddy... You muddying. are muddying the waters on what anti-Semitism is. You're muddying the waters on all these... These fucking disgusting beliefs that Nick Fuentes holds. And I, I don't know why you're doing it. And you're propping him up as like this kind of nice, funny, quirky guy, not calling him out on his sick, disgusting beliefs in your own fucking community. And you're just like, this is what's frustrating me. Why? Just why are you doing it? Why don't you go and have a, uh, a debate with him? Okay, well, I will. If you could get me in contact with uh, him in some way. I don't know if he uses Discord, if he's been banned, but... Um, I'd be more than happy to debate him on Holocaust revisionism, uh, if he's interested. Okay, I will, um, I'll let him know, okay? Okay. Well, uh, I think we're done here. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, and, uh, somebody wanted me to ask, uh, play Valorant with Lily Pichu. Gotcha. Have fun, buddy. Okay. Well, take care. You think he truly didn't understand the idea that joke doesn't mean I don't actually believe this? Um, I'm not actually sure. I don't know. I don't know. The, when I'm engaging with people's like political viewpoints, um, what I, like my goal is if somebody asks me about a person's given political position that I can speak at decent length about what they believe and why they believe it. If I'm um, if I'm at a point to where I'm just like saying I think he believes this because of a tweet or joke, I don't believe that I've got like a good engagement or a good high level engagement with the person believes. Now I understand for a lot of people that's enough or that's the type of conversation they want to have or that's like good enough for them to say oh well the problem is which is fine. If you want to have that level of engagement, that's perfectly a okay. I think that's perfectly a okay. You can do that. Um, do you do this for anybody other than Fuentes? Yes, I do this to every motherfucker I talk to. I will ask your views. I don't usually just try to say like, oh, he's a communist or blah, blah, blah. Unless I'm saying it as an insult. I might use tanky or as an insult, much the same way I might use Nazi as an insult. But when I'm engaging with somebody, I'm usually always trying to engage with the actual views that they have. Because I think that if for no other reason, if for no other reason, because it makes for better conversations than obsessing over whether or not somebody fits a given political label. Like, it's just so cringe. Do you think you apply the same reasoning to Keffels or is she an exception? Where do I, anytime I'm attacking things related to Keffels or her viewpoints, it's always about things she said or done. What do you mean? We were intentionally using the word probably so that you can support having an agnostic position because even if it's true and can seem weaselly to the audience, I, I, then, I, then I need to figure out either another way to educate you guys on understanding like other minds better, or I just need to not, I don't know, I don't know what to do at that point. I'll go until I get banned from the internet if people can't handle that, right? The reality is, is that people can believe a wide variety of things for a wide variety of reasons. People can even say things that give me a, like a reason to believe that they think a certain thing. But like, if I had a conversation with Fuentes, like here's something that I would say, Nick is anti-liberal. 
Absolutely. I know that because I've had specific conversations with him about things like democracy or voting or whatever. And their group, their America First group, they don't really give a fuck about things like freedom of speech or liberal principles, at least from what I've heard. I'm comfortable saying that. But when you ask me things that are things that I haven't had specific conversations about, in my mind, I can imagine, well, they could believe this or they could believe that or this. They probably believe this thing, but it could be other things. That's what I try to think of when I'm like, it's it's a it's a probabilistic function. And it might even be 95% in one direction, but until you know, until you have the conversation, it's always a probability. Like I take the same approach when it comes to breaking news. If somebody shows me a video of a cop beating the fuck out of somebody, my question is always like, okay, why am I seeing a 15 second clip? You know, what came before? If he'd asked you to ballpark the chance that Nick was a Holocaust revisionist, would you have answered? Yeah, it's probably like 80, 85% would be my guess. Cause I'm pretty sure I've heard him engage in Holocaust revisionism before. He probably still thinks it. That'd be my guess. Um, Probably 80, 85% would be my guess, but maybe not. They might've dropped that talking point or maybe he's changed his mind on it. I'm not sure. I don't know. I just haven't had that conversation with him recently. Oh my God, this guy Hello. sounds like he pumps his farts directly into his lungs with a CPAP uh, hi, machine. What's up, buddy? Wow. Oh, Yo, I'm not. Hey, no, I, I can't be here long because I got shit to go take care of. Hey, it seems like in a lot of your recent content, a lot of people have questioned Nick Fuentes, whether he's an anti-Semite, the Holocaust now shit that just happened. Why won't you just have a conversation with him over those topics? Because I think a lot of what you're doing is genuine, right? Like, like, hey, I don't want to put a label on somebody when I'm not sure that this label actually applies because people change, right? So why won't you just have a conversation with him solely over? Sure, there's two reasons. Um, I could have that conversation. Um, but the problem is that there, there's two problems. One is it's not very relevant to stuff that's going right now. I don't know how much they talk about it. So it would be that conversation in lieu of something else that might be more entertaining to talk about or more relevant to talk about. But then two, the big thing is that even if I have that conversation, if it is the case that he's just like, okay, yeah, I'm not really a revisionist anymore. I don't believe it anymore. I don't think it would matter. I think people would just say like, oh, well, he was lying in that conversation. So then it would be like even more suicide inspiring for me to, to have that conversation. Like, well, fuck me. Why did I just... Why did I waste my time even doing this? Like I would go crazy at that point. Yeah. So like he he possible. put a bunch of stuff on his Telegram recently about being anti deplatforming or whatever, and people were saying like, oh, that's not true. He's actually he's not even gonna adhere to that, and that's like a much smaller thing. So like, what the fuck is even the point? Got you. I agree that he could grift and people would be unsatisfied, but those people are stupid, right? But I think when it comes to you, your association with him, how your fans view him, blah blah blah. It would be good to get like a honest, like even if y'all are having a different conversation, y'all like, hey, let's set aside like five minutes to run through this anti-Semitism shit. Because it could be he say, hey, I've changed my views. I've evolved over time, blah, blah, blah. And then like that isn't fulfilling to everyone. But I think a lot of people would be fulfilled by it, especially like the people that watch you most often. So you would be have done your due diligence on trying to figure out if he still holds some of the but I don't care if my audience, I don't want my audience to not like somebody because they're a Nazi or a fascist well, I, I, or whatever. No, I, like, if they don't like no, them, no. I want it to be because of the views we discuss. So if like a specific yeah. thing came up about like immigration or maybe race realism or something like that, that would be interesting to discuss. But like, you guys can't like him because gotcha. he's a Nazi. I don't, I just don't care as much about that. Like, but. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. No. So I agree with you on this. And maybe I'm, I'm saying something that's wrong because I'm trying to hurry up because I really need to go back downstairs. Yeah. But um, it, the, the. The thing that you do where you say, I don't care about the label, I care about the ideas under the label. I agree. When I'm talking about having this conversation, I'm talking about having a conversation about the ideas under the label, not the label itself. Because I agree with you. I don't care at all if he says, hey, I'm a Nazi or I'm not a Nazi. Mm -hmm. But hey, do you feel kind of weird about Jewish people? Do you kind of dislike Jewish people? Blah, blah, blah. Or like Holocaust now, do you really think the Holocaust happened? Do you think it's all a, a, a fat, uh, fake? Mm -hmm. So all of those things, yeah, I agree with you. Asking about the, the relevant points instead of the label um by, by far would be better okay all right cool all right cool i love you babe bye <laughs>